We're back with the BMW R1200GS. Welcome to Hack a Week. So yeah, I am selling this 2005 BMW R1200GS. Why, you say? Well, um, basically because I'm not using it to its potential and its intended purpose, which is like a dual sport adventure bike. It's awesome for that. I have taken it out on a few dirt roads, etc. But, you know, it's a big bike. It's built for getting out on the road and doing some touring. I'm not doing so much of that anymore. I live right here in the mountains of North Carolina. And within five minutes, I'm on some awesome twisty mountain roads. Within 15 minutes, I'm on the Blue Ridge Parkway, whichever way I want to go. So uh, I was after a lighter weight bike, and I picked one up in the uh, Triumph Street Triple. And we'll be doing a little work on that sometime in the future. But today, what I need to do is bleed the brake system on this. I made the mistake of trying to bleed it just off the reservoir in the back, I compromised it, I got a little air in the system. What happens is when you're doing that, you're pulling fluid out of the reservoirs that are in the ABS pump, which is buried underneath this tank and these fairings and all, that's all gotta come off to get at it. There's a specific procedure you need to follow in order on, I think grand total, there are nine bleeder valves on this bike. You'll see the ones underneath the tank on the ABS unit in a minute. but. It's got to be done in a specific order. Then when you're all done, you turn the key on and you use the levers, either front and rear, to do a final bit of a flush on the calipers. And then you're done. And hopefully there's no air in the system. You're supposed to do this, I guess, with the GS11 tool, which is the scan tool for these motorcycles. The dealer has that. And you hear all this stuff about it's impossible to break, uh, bleed these systems. Without that tool, you have to take it to the dealer. I found a video that covers the 1200 models where someone did it without the tool, just utilizing the pump. But initially, everything is fully manual. You disable the pump, key off, and you do some stuff with the brake levers front and rear to do an initial flush. Then you go after the ABS unit. Then you do a final one. So. We'll run through it. I'm going to try to make it a lot more concise and short than the video I saw, which was quite lengthy. Every time he cracked open the valve and opened it, had to do that numerous times. He recorded it, which gets pretty tedious to watch. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to explain how to get it done in the steps. You won't be watching the entire procedure, and I have talked long enough. I need to shut up and get to work on this damn thing. So, okay, I'm not going to take you through every single nut and bolt that's got to come off from this thing to get all this stuff off. I'm just going to kind of concentrate quickly on one side and show you where those screws are and lifting off some panels. And, of course, the other side, I'm not going to record all that. And we're going to try to speed along as much as we can and keep this thing something that isn't going to be this super lengthy video. Seat's got to come off. And then you've got a wing nut, wing bolt, I guess I could call it. It's got a little thingy on there. If you turn like this, that releases it. And this one releases that. And then there is a screw that holds this in. I got a T25 Torx driver here. There's a lot of these. And it's a little loose in there. It's probably a T27. T25 works. But anyway. And that just lifts off. Same thing on the other side. That's the fuel tank. This uh, bolt will stay in here on this rubber washer. There should be a rubber washer there. If there's not, you can um, just make one out of a flat piece of rubber that you could probably find at the hardware store, just like an eighth inch piece of rubber. So the fuel lines run here. Underneath here is going to be a place where we can disconnect them. Three screws hold this side cover on. Let's put the screws in there. We're just going to lay that aside. There's a screw right here that holds the top part in place, connects it to the front. Get that screw out, put that with the rest. 
Gonna do the same thing on the other side, then we'll get back over here. Back to this side, five millimeter Allen right here. There's two of these bolts, they hold the tank to the frame of the bike. There's a panel right here, by the way, that has to come off from the other side and it just pops off. It's on rubber grommets. That's how it comes off. Oh, and on this side, be sure to pull that little bracket off as well. Okay, with those two bolts loose, out of there. With those two bolts out of there, the tank's loose. There's a quick connect here. You push on that, pull on that. A little bit of fuel is gonna drip out. Should seal, and it does. Lift up the back of the tank, pull it toward the back of the bike. Gonna do the same thing on the other side, then we'll get back over here. All right, over here is another set of connections underneath that cover. You just lift it up. And there are two electrical connectors. They've got just a little tab on them that you can push and they should release. They're a little tricky to get at. Let's get the fuel line next. It's another quick connect. Now I can get at these a little bit easier. There we go. These are tank um, breather lines. We'll take those off next. I'm gonna mark. Uh, gonna mark one with a red paint mark just to put them back in the right place. I don't know for sure if it matters, but I think it does because there's one marked W, and the other one isn't marked at all. Now we can lift this off the bike. Of course, it's a lot easier to do this when the tank is nearly empty. Okay, there is the ABS unit. And here are all of the bleeder valves. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the back is one for the rear caliper. That makes seven. Up front, there are two, one on each caliper, eight, nine. So yes, nine bleeders altogether. So the trick is, bleeding them all in the right order. Um, it's as simple as that. This is the reservoirs, um, front and rear, for brake fluid. These come out and you can thread in a funnel that BMW uses. You can buy them, they're hard to find. You can also just 3D print the nozzle and put your own funnel on there. The thing is you have to have something that will hold a volume of fluid because when you're bleeding that out, fluid's gonna go through the system and it needs to be replaced as you go. You can fill it and bleed it, fill it and bleed it, or you can just put on the larger funnel, which just makes it a lot easier. I made this. This part right here is 3D printed. It's a portion of a larger file that's available on Thingiverse. I'll take my version and probably post it there and at least get a link to you for the original. And then I just put epoxy in there, sat this in overnight. And this is something I found at an auto parts store. It's kind of neat. It holds a whole quart and it's got a valve built into it. When you rotate it, it's open or closed. I think that's closed, that's open. I'll have to check, but it's free to flow. This will screw right in to where one of these plugs is and then I can just have that fluid there. I can watch it drop as I do the bleed. First thing I'm gonna do is pull the connector for the ABS pump, just, just to be sure it's fully disabled. Just want to do that. Two fluid level sensors, we're going to disconnect those. Not too much slack on that harness. There we go. These two filler plugs, eight millimeter socket, Allen and they'll come out. We'll just lift up that line, pull these over here out of the way. So let's get the caps off all the bleeder valves to start with. There are three circuits here. This one, 
is the metering circuit and then this is number two that's the integral circuit and then third is this one that is the control circuit now they're set up kind of odd this is the rear metering circuit so I'm gonna give it to you in the number we're gonna bleed them the uh, metering circuit goes first let's call that number one the integral circuit goes second we'll call that number two and the control circuit is third number three here's the order though they stagger so you bleed for the rear you bleed one two and three so one two and three for the front it's one two and three it's odd how those are flipped but that's the order you need to do it in and initially what we're going to do is bleed it from the small reservoir at the back of the bike here so this reservoir we're going to be filling and bleeding from this according to my instructions so let's get that cap off and I'm going to top that off with some fluid and we'll get started. Cap is off, reservoir is topped up. We'll be working with the rear brake lever, so we're going to have to pump on this and then bleed up at the ABS pump. So these are all 7 millimeter sized bleeder screws. Here's the tool for that, 7 millimeter. This has um, a rubber like o-ring seal inside there and when you push it onto the bleeder it seals and then in here is the cool part there's a check valve it only lets fluid come out it doesn't let air or fluid come back in so you put it on the bleeder valve and then you can open or close it like that and what happens is you get a nice seal onto the bleeder valve and then you can just leave it open and pump away instead of having to crack it open after you've pumped it close pump pressure crack it open close pump pressure etc now i don't know if it's going to work on these really short ones uh, i'm already suspicious because that rubber seal is up in there a ways i don't think it's going to go on far enough for the shorties but it will for these long ones uh, it kind of, to me, doesn't quite feel like it. But we'll find out shortly because we're going to get started. Here's the first one we're going to do. That's the metering circuit. So here we go. Toolkit comes with a silicone hose. So I'm going to get that on there. And then we're going to route that down to the floor and catch it in a little container. The line is attached, the bleeder valve is open, and what I'm gonna do now with my foot is just start pumping on the rear pedal. And you can see the air coming out of there. And I'll take that till the reservoir at the back is almost empty. Okay, I'm on my fourth fill up of the reservoir and I've still got some air coming out of there. So basically what you need to do is move through all three and keep repeating it until you don't see any air. Alright, so the next one, number two, the integral circuit for the rear is here. Let's get the bleeder valve on that. And we're going to open it up. Gonna go about a half a turn to make sure it's fully open. We're gonna do the same thing, working from the rear brake fluid reservoir to bleed it out. So we're just gonna pump and start purging air out of that circuit. I was still getting air out of this, but I'm gonna move on to the third one, which is the control circuit, and that's back here. This is the tall one. Let's crack it open and start pumping. And the air is coming out of there too. Eventually we're gonna purge all this air. It looks like that check valve does not seal that well on these really short bleeder screws. So I'm just going back to the pump it, bleed it, close it, pump it, open, close, pump it, open, close. I think it was pulling a little air back in with the check valve because now I'm starting to get fluid with minimal air so moving right along pretty nifty tool but 
in this situation because these are so short and hard to get at. I'm just gonna stick with the old way of doing it. Pump, release, close, pump, release, close. So we see no air. And I think we're almost there. And that's it for the rear. There is no more air coming out of there and I've done that whole one, two, three thing about four or five times. Now we'll just repeat that whole procedure for the front. On the front, we're gonna use this front brake reservoir, of course. Right now, it's almost full. Same procedure, but now we're on the front, so we're gonna bleed it one, two, three. Metering circuit, integral circuit, control circuit. And we'll just keep going through those and refilling the reservoir until all of the air has been bled out. I don't think the front is gonna be as bad. So we just use the front brake lever for this one. You can see the color of the fluid. It really could use a flush. I don't think there's any air in the front. That's where uh, I didn't do any kind of a bleeding with that that ended up in air getting in there. So this should go a lot quicker. And last, the control circuit. So now we top that off, not all the way, fill it up to about the bottom of the threads. Put the little rubber seal back in there. And we've got the interlock thingy. Cap back on, and we'll do the same thing with the rear. And we'll move on to doing the ABS pump. Now we can put the custom filler plug on here. I put an O-ring on it right there, just as a little extra uh, ounce of prevention, as they say, to make sure it doesn't leak because it is screwed in and it just bottoms out against the plastic. I think it would be better if there's an O-ring. Let's get this in place. And then what you do is rotate it one way or the other and it's supposed to help it seal. You can already see that that's a bit compromised. When I turned it, it spun in the epoxy, but let's try it anyway. So I'm gonna pour a little fluid in now, just like 100 mils. There's about 800 milliliters in there. The valve's closed, and uh, this is for the rear, so I need to reconnect the level sensors. And I also need to reconnect the ABS control on the other side. And we'll plug the ABS module back in so it can power up. Pull the cap off from the bleeder on the rear caliper. This one's an eight millimeter wrench. We'll get that on there. Get the hose attached. And we're gonna run the hose into this container. Key on. And when I touch the rear brake pedal, we should hear the ABS pump run. That's all I want to do is just touch it to it runs. Don't apply pressure, just make it run. And then we're going to crack this open. And it's going to push fluid through from our reserve in that funnel. And you'll see air bubbles working their wear out. Give it a couple more times, make sure all the air's out. Some of the air you'll see coming out could be coming in from the block, bottom of the bleeder valve too. That, that happens. I'll show you a little trick with that. What you can do is put a little bit of silicone grease right around the base of the bleeder. And what it'll do is kind of act as a temporary seal. We're going to wipe all the excess off later. But as that fluid is flowing through there, then you're not going to get the air bubbles 
sneaking their way in through the threads underneath, tricking you into thinking that you've actually got air in the system still when you, when you really don't. So let's hook it all up again. Activate the pump, crack it open a little. We've got fluid. You see there's no air bubbles now when I open and close it. So some of those air bubbles are coming from the base of the bleeder. That can fool you. Same thing on that front bleeder. A little bit of silicone grease. It's a little tricky to get it in behind there. But if I turn it a little... And just do this. There we go. Okay, let's get the line hooked up. Get the wrench on there. Get the line connected. Okay, line connected. Hose is in the bucket. Squeeze the front brake. Activating the pump. Let's crack this open. Let some fluid flow through. I'm gonna watch the reservoir and see how much I'm going to let about 100 mils go through, just like I did the rear. And that one's done. We'll do the other side. And that is it. Now we can get these two filler caps for the reservoirs screwed back in place. They don't need to be really tight. Just snug them up a little bit. That's plenty. And a little final rinse with some brake clean. Rinse off all of the bleeder valves. Get any excess fluid washed out of here. It'll just run out the bottom, right about the center of the bike. Follow that up with a little bit of air. Put all those bleeder caps back in place. All six of them. Solid brakes. Everything feels good. They'll be even better when I upgrade the pads and the rear rotor. Good deal. Well, that's, uh, that's a, two big projects out of the way on this thing. And it's ready to sell. It'll be on the Craigslist uh, listing in Asheville, North Carolina, if you're interested. Strike while it's hot, so to speak. Spring's here. It's time to go ride motorcycles. Where's my Triumph? It's out in the driveway. But uh, I'm going to do some stuff to that in the future. Probably a few videos. Not so much in the bike builds, maybe someday again, I don't know. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time.